Cameron Jankowski was fired from Taco Bell in July of 2012 after he posted a picture on Twitter that showed him relieving himself on a plate of nachos while at work. So obviously the image went viral because people are like, is this actually like what you're doing behind the scenes at Taco Bell? Like I'm never going to eat at Taco Bell ever again. Cameron said that it was just a joke that he doesn't actually do it to people's food. But I mean, he still got fired for it. And honestly, kind of deserved. Hey everybody, welcome back. We live in a day and age where everybody is posting everything they do on social media. At least most people are most people I know are. But the problem comes when you post things on social media that you really shouldn't be. Like we all do things that we shouldn't, but telling everyone in our network that we're doing those things is not a good idea. We are looking at some social media posts that got people fired today. I got the tea, I'm gonna spill it. Going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding, I'm white. All right, I know you guys have seen this around. The woman in this tweet is Justine Sacco, and she was a public relations specialist who was working for internet firm Interactive Corp. So she was in PR and she, like, this is like, yeah, this is not a good PR move for anyone. The tweet ended up going viral and she actually didn't delete it until like hours after she tweeted it, which was like, I mean, you let it go way more viral than it needed to go by not deleting it. And yeah, people were so upset about this tweet that she ended up getting fired from her public relations job. Doesn't really surprise me. <laughs> you shouldn't be working in public relations if that's the kind of stuff that you think you can tweet. So this photo of Australian miners and they were all fired after they did a video of them doing the Harlem Shake inside the mine. <laughs> That, you know, I actually haven't seen the video, but it looks like it, it was great. Like th that looks like the best party ever. I want to be invited to that. <laughs> so the bosses that fired them felt the behavior was a safety issue and took actions against those involved. Note to self, don't do the Harlem shake in a mine. <laughs> or really just try not to do challenges while you're working. Unless you're a nurse or doctor. You guys can do whatever you want. Carly McKinney was fired from her job after a local news station found her Finsta Twitter account where she was posting photos of herself, you know, kind of like saucy, saucy photos. And also she posted photos of herself that visibly showed her smoking the devil's lettuce on school property. She said in defense that the Twitter account was a parody her students also defended her, uh, but she was still fired, so. <laughs> Word of advice, if you ever end up on set as a background extra, I highly recommend you try it at some point. It's really fun to be on set and see how everything works. Uh, it's a lot, it's gonna be a long day, but it's a lot of fun. If you ever have the chance to be a background extra, definitely do it. But word of advice, don't take photos or, or, or tell people on the internet or people in general about what's gonna happen on the show or in the movie that you're an extra on. That's like rule number one, you're signing an NDA, you're not supposed to talk about it. An extra on the show Glee, Nicole Crowther, pretty much stopped her career in the entertainment industry like dead after she tweeted Glee spoilers. One of the tweets specifically was kind of like the worst of all and one, probably the one that got her fired. She spoiled who the prom king and queen were in the second season of the prom episode. It resulted in Brad Falchuk, which is a producer of Glee, to tweet, who are you to spoil something talented people have spent months to create? Hope you're qualified to do something besides work in entertainment. Nicole said that the tweet ruined her life. She was blacklisted as an extra. So instead of pursuing her acting dream, she had to go work for her family's roofing business. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel for you, man. Like that sucks, especially if you did want a career in entertainment. But unfortunately, um, that's kind of rule number one. You're not really supposed to be tweeting spoilers of anything that you're on set for, ever. <laughs> if you ever see someone on set tweeting, you know, behind the scenes stuff, uh, they're doing that either because it's not that great of a production or because the production is already out, like the commercial or the show has already been released. So they can. A daycare worker got fired and got death threats after she flipped off children in the daycare and filmed instead of watching over them. So eventually angry parents saw this and uh, 
contacted the owner of the daycare and then she was fired. <laughs> like, I get what you were trying to say, but, uh, just, I, you know, me too, probably. If I was, you know, in a daycare with a bunch of kids and they were acting crazy, I probably would be really frustrated as well. But don't put it on social media, man. Like, don't, don't tell everybody that you hate your job. <laughs> it's like, we all hate our job. Actually, I love my job. But most of us don't like our jobs. Doesn't mean you need to tell everyone about it. So a hairdresser was fired after posting an angry rant because staff at a restaurant decided to save a dying woman instead of serving her her food. This is the post that supposedly got her fired. I will never go back to this location for New Year's Eve. After the way we were treated when we spent $700 plus and having our meal ruined by watching a dead person being wheeled out from an overdose, my night has been ruined. Every year we come to Kilroy's to enjoy New Year's Eve and tonight we were screamed at and had the manager walk away from us while we were trying to figure out our bill being messed up. The manager also told us someone dying was more important than us being there making us feel like our business didn't matter. <laughs> I mean, the sheer entitlement here. Doesn't this belong in one of my entitlement videos? Like, I feel like it does. But I guess allowing a <laughs> in the building to <laughs> on your property is more important than paying customers who are spending a lot of money. Our waitress, when we were trying to ask about our bill being messed up, also said, what do you want me to do? Pay your bill for you. What a great way to talk to a paying customer. I get that working on New Year's Eve is stressful, but being a complete blank to us all night, knowing you get an automatic gratuity is not right. Uh, yeah, this is like sheer entitlement. Like to not be even just a little bit understanding in that situation, like that's super freaking stressful. Because not only is it stressful to work on New Year's Eve, now they're also witnesses to, you know, something that police are gonna wanna know more about. That's super stressful. <laughs> and also, apparently, it wasn't, you know, like an alleged overdose. It was actually a 70 year old lady who suffered a heart attack and had to be taken to the hospital. And good news though, the woman ended up surviving. But, uh, <laughs> this hairdresser ended up losing her career. This article says after public outrage and personal attacks, the salon where Jones was working was bombarded with negative reviews and threats. She was fired from her job and has since disappeared from social media. Doesn't surprise me. I'd be afraid of social media after that as well. Social media does not like entitled people, honey. I know that for a fact. So see this photo right here of the blonde girls and drawing on a drunk guy? <laughs> So that is actually former New England's Patriot cheerleader, Caitlin Davis, and she was fired for posting this image, <laughs> which is honestly, it kind of looks like practically every picture that I took of myself in residence, <laughs> like university residence. But if you look closer, it's actually what was drawn on the guy that got her in trouble. She defended herself by saying she actually didn't draw on the person's body but she made it look like she did. And I mean, we weren't there, so how would we know? <laughs> and yeah, she ended up getting fired. So a woman who worked at a zoo, at the Brookfield Zoo, posted on Facebook, and it received so much backlash that she actually had to change her name and quit her job. This was the post. What's up y'all at work serving these rude <laughs> white people. The post resulted in a lot of complaints and a lot of negative reviews on the Facebook page of the zoo. The Brookfield Zoo reps issued a statement on their Facebook page which said, yesterday we became aware of the actions of a single employee, which we agree are unacceptable. This employee statements and social media are in violation of our policies and do not reflect our institution's values. We have zero tolerance for these kinds of divisive behaviors. We treat all employment matters confidentially, but please know that we took prompt action to remedy the situation this morning. And they also added that she didn't work at the zoo anymore. Yeah, <laughs> awkward. Richard Mendenhall, who was a professional football player, retired from professional football because of a tweet that was about Osama bin Laden. The death of Osama bin Laden. This was the tweet. What kind of person celebrates death? It's amazing how people can hate a man they never even heard speak. We have only heard one side. And the tweet was about Osama bin Laden's death. Yeah. So after the tweet, he got a lot of criticism, a lot of backlash and he lost his endorsements and then he was then traded from Pittsburgh Steelers to the Cardinals and in 2014, he just retired. Crazy how one tweet can totally ruin your life, eh? Gilbert Gottfried lost a voice acting role after he tweeted this insensitive 
statement about the disaster in Japan. I just split up with my girlfriend, but like the Japanese say, there'll be another one floating by any minute now. Granted, Gilbert Gottfried is a comedian who, you know, it's kind of the comedian's job to push the limit of what's acceptable because a lot of what we find funny is actually, it makes us uncomfortable, so we laugh. But this joke was a little too far because it was a reference to the Japanese earthquake that killed like 15,000 people. He was quickly dismissed from voicing Alflak's duck mascot, which is unsurprising because Alflak does 75% of its business in Japan. Yeah, they, I have a feeling they probably wouldn't like that. Reza Aslan, who was a former CNN host, was fired after he called Trump a piece of poop. <laughs> this was the tweet. This piece of poop is not just an embarrassment to America and a stain on the presidency, he's an embarrassment to humankind. I mean, I actually think it's great that CNN did take action about this because, you know, Trump hated CNN, hates CNN. CNN does hate Trump, like they do, but this is just a little bit far. A security guard at a Florida hospital got fired after he posted a video of himself farting. <laughs> what a perfect way to end this video. Who doesn't remember this guy? So he did end up getting fired, but uh, it, he turned into an internet star. The video went viral and he got famous over a fart. <laughs> all right guys, those were some social media posts that got people fired. Listen, we all have opinions that maybe most people wouldn't agree with, but uh, <laughs> just be careful about what opinions you share online is all I'm saying. If you do have opinions that people don't agree with, just keep those opinions to yourself. Subscribe.